Hi, uh, I'm Lachlan Hunt here for standardsuck.org. That's, that's our sign. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm here with Steve Faulkner from the, the Pacello group, is that right? That's right. Yeah, uh, we're here to talk about uh, the WCAG 2 specification. So, tell us, what is WCAG 2? WCAG 2 is the uh, next generation of uh, the W3C Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. Okay, and what, what does that involve? It, well, what is accessibility? Well, what, <laughs> what, what is web accessibility? What is and what, what's the purpose of these guidelines? Well, to help people um, make websites and web applications accessible to people with disabilities. That's my take on it anyway. Oh, yeah? uh, how has it uh, changed from WCAG 1? Is, is it an improvement or is it, well, is it I, I think, well, hopefully it's definitely an improvement. They've taken seven years to do it and they've had lots and lots of input from lots and lots of people, so hopefully there's an improvement. I, I think the, the main difference is, is that it attempts to be a lot more technology uh, neutral um, and also that it um, attempts to uh, deal with uh, a lot of the, the issues that, that are more prevalent today. I mean, the web moved on since, what, it was nine years ago or whatever when it was first, first came out? Yeah, 1999. And the web moves, move, has moved on a lot and the way people use the web and the way people interact with the web has moved on. It's got to um, come to terms with those challenges. And I think in the end that uh, although it's not a perfect document and um, there's still issues as far as cognitive disabilities are concerned, for example, um, it's a big improvement on, on WCAG 1 and it's, yeah, it, it contains a lot of good information about how to make websites and web applications accessible, which is what it tries to do. Okay. Well, um, Joe Clark wrote an article on a list apart called To Hell With WCAG 2 a year or two ago, uh, and he complained about a lot of the things with WCAG 2. So, so the spec was basically unreadable and it didn't cover all these issues. Uh, what would your take on that? Well, as so I said um, previously, that I think that, that uh, Joe had a lot of good points about the spec um, at that point. But there was a lot, there, there was, it went through a, a couple of last calls or whatever they, they, they're called, processes where within the W3C where people can, um, can put the public can com make comment, and there was there was literally thousands of comments, I think, and uh, the 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 information or the you know the the uh, comments that Joe made form formed up part of that. And uh, one of the issues when you're talking about the the, the use of, of language, they they really worked on that, and so it's a lot easier to read. It's more human readable than it, than it was before. I, and I think that, that those those issues, some of these issues were peripheral or issues that clouded the actual, the, the strength that were, were within the, um, the document itself. And once they cleaned those up, then it sort of like shined up quite well. Okay. Um, well Joe also started the, the WCAG Samurai shortly after he wrote that article. Um, and he has since released a lot of errata for the WCAG 1 specification. What did you think of those? Were they, were they good? And what did you think of the way that they were, in which they were developed in, in secret? Um, it was all a bit cloak and dagger. I mean, you know, it was it was dramatic, wasn't it? It was a certain drama and melodrama about the whole thing. Um, the resulting document was quite interesting, and there's some and there's a lot of good points within that document. But I I think in in, in a way that that it's not had a huge impact because it's it was a document that was that was developed outside the W3C, and for, for better or for worse, the the, the W3C has some credibility as far as these things are concerned and governments and corporations around the world tend to take on and and, and see the say the worker guidelines as as a benchmark and whereas something such as Wake Samurai might why it may contain interesting information or or good information, it's not going to be taken on as a benchmark. Um, whereas I think again that Wake 2 will. Okay. Thanks Steve, that's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, this has been, yeah, well, yeah, unless you've got more to say. No, no, I've got, well, I'd, yeah, I'd just like to say it's been great to meet Lachlan in person. Yeah. And it's nice to, to be with a fellow Australian. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say, we're here in London at At Media Conference, and yeah, I met up with him yesterday and we decided to do this. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. it has been Lachlan Hunt and Steve Faulkner for standardsuck.org. See ya. Oi. <laughs>